Welcome again to Drug Development and FDA Regulations. What we're going to be looking at today are what does FDA have to do with the whole process? Where do they get involved? And what are the regulations that we all must follow? It's the same for all of us in the drug industry, whether it be a rare disease or one of the common ones. However, the sample sizes and some of the issues might be reduced a bit for rare disease because FDA realizes that the market just isn't there. You're not going to be able to make the big dollars that the pharmaceutical companies going after the generalized uh, types of uh, drugs would be. So there are some uh, shortcuts that perhaps are allowed by FDA for rare disease studies. However, the bulk of the regulations are the same. So let's look at the objectives for today. First of all, we're going to look, as I mentioned, to FDA's role. What do they have to do with the drug development process? Where does the regulator get involved? It, we need to make sure it's consistent for all companies, big and small. We're then going to look at the logic behind that drug development process. It is a bureaucratic process, but there's a lot of logic to it. It does flow. We're going to look at the submissions themselves. What is an IND? What is an NDA? IND stands for Investigational New Drug. We have to have one of those if we're going to test in humans. The NDA is New Drug Application. That's our option to market the product. We submit a, a whole package of information that we believe should lead us to a market rights. It's safe and it's effective for the population that we're coming across with. We include our labeling in that, so we'll be looking at all of those issues. What goes into the submission, and why should the FDA allow us to test in humans, which is the IND, and market to people would be the NDA. We're going to then talk to the basics of the clinical trial process. What happens when we move to clinical from our preclinical work? And then we'll talk about the FDA's review process. What is it they're looking for to allow us to test the drug and to allow us to market the drug? And we'll look at the three major FDA regulations, which would be good clinical practice, good laboratory practice, and good manufacturing practice. This is where the FDA gets involved. So let's look at this first slide. It says FDA, and that is the Food and Drug Administration. Some of us might know that they also handle biologics. They also handle medical devices. But they've never changed their title. It's always been Food and Drug Administration. Drugs were, main, were regulated much earlier than medical devices. It is the federal government's primary consumer protection agency. Consumer protection agency. Chat to me, if you will, who are the consumers? If this is the government's primary consumer protection agency, who are those consumers that they're protecting? Yes, it is us, you and I, as well as any participants in a clinical trial. Oftentimes, people in this course feel as though the FDA is only there for the research folks. That's not at all the case. We'll see as we proceed through that the FDA is watching over all marketed products as well. We often see some recalls made. That might be from good manufacturing practice. If they find that the specifications for the pill size, for example, or the volume of a drug, drug might be a liquid that's put into a vial, if those specs are not being met, in inspections that the FDA has at our facility where we're manufacturing, they have the option to recall that particular batch or lot number. So they're looking out for us as long as that product is marketed. And as long as that product is marketed, someone from the pharmaceutical company on an annual basis has to alert the FDA as to any issues that they have been led to believe are happening for that drug. Now, that might be through consumers calling in. It might be the CDC, Center for Disease Control. Any area where reports are coming in to the sponsor, if the sponsor knows about any reactions at all, this goes into an annual report that must be presented to the FDA. So that's how they find out what's going on. 
other than doing their own inspections. Now, the FDA has not been around forever and ever. Most people think it has been. It was founded in 1931, so it's less than 100 years old. They enforce the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. You might see that listed as FDC, which became available in 1938. So the FDA was founded seven years before, but the first major legal issue they had, or act to follow, was in 1938. We still draw attention back to that act very often in our regulatory process. 